The first step in the sequential processing of paper documents is the amino acid stage. And for today's work, we have uh, selected the uh, indane dione reagent. But before we get to using the actual solution, it's important to note the difference in the products that are on the market. And these may have an impact on your uh, results. So my recommendation is to ensure that your product looks like this one in my right hand, which is uh, a very uniform, finely subdivided yellow powder. Uh, another example of a product is this more crystalline, darker colored uh, product. And immediately you know that there is something very different about these two products, even though they are both listed as indane dione. I am familiar with the one on the right that is the yellow powder and the results that it gives. I can't say or I can't eliminate the possibility that the darker one would work, but I'm not sure of it. Therefore, I myself am going to be very careful about the supply source. So once again, be very careful about your supply source and uh, govern yourself accordingly when purchasing. We're now going to use the uh, published formula for indane dione, which we have mixed. And it's a very simple process, similar to any other amino acid processing procedure, where we immerse the exhibits in the solution, like so, making sure that they are completely immersed. Work done by uh, Robert Ramatowski of the US Secret Service has indicated that the ideal immersion time is in the neighborhood of 7 to 10 seconds. So we are going to, uh, after that period of time, we are going to take these exhibits from the solution and place them in an area where they can air dry like so. Because the, the solvent of choice is HFE 7100, uh, first of all, this is a very environmentally friendly solvent. And as well, it dries very quickly. And in my experience, has not had a negative impact on ink. So that concludes the very simple process of treating these exhibits uh, in the first stage with the amino acid reagent. And it must be said as well that this could uh, be substituted uh, with uh, the DFO solution, uh, but it is my uh, preference to use uh, indane dione based on its past performance. I think it is a more sensitive reagent. Therefore, that's the one we're featuring in this workshop. The second stage of the process is to apply dry heat to the exhibits, making sure that they have completely air dried. So my exhibits have now completely air dried, and I'm going to apply uh, dry heat to them. The preferred and recommended dry heat is through either a dry mounting press or a uh, t-shirt press one that can be set for 160 degrees C and applies uniform heat to the entire surface. So that would be the preferred method. For the purpose of this workshop, we are going to use uh, an ordinary household iron, uh, definitely without water. So it is a dry uh, iron set for the wool setting. Again, the recommendation for uh, heat application from the Azri uh, Australian Federal Police uh, is to place the exhibits between uh, pieces of clean uh, bond paper.
such as you would take from your copy machine. And then, preferably, as I mentioned before, with the use of a dry mounting press or uh, a t-shirt press, apply that heat for 10 seconds to the entire surface. This compares very favorably to the recommendations for application of heat for DFO in that that process is often as much as 10 or 20 minutes in a, uh, an oven. So this is obviously quite a bit faster. Now we have processed the first exhibit. We can see that there is a visible color change uh, indicating uh, impressions have been deposited and developed on the paper. It must be said, however, that indane dion does not have, in my experience, as strong a color mode as either ninhydrin or DFO, but at the end of the day, that's not what we're interested in anyway because the fluorescence part of things is much more sensitive and has a much longer reach than simply staining the print with, uh, with color. So this is merely an indication of, of promise. Again, when the exhibits have been completely air dried after immersion in the indane dione solution, it's simply a matter of applying heat for approximately 10 seconds to the entire surface. And once again, we have signs of uh, development here in the color mode, which uh, are promising. They don't uh, guarantee anything, but they are certainly promising in terms of what we may find when we look for fluorescence. As previously mentioned, the preferred method for applying the dry heat is to use a dry mounting press or a t-shirt press because it ensures uh, even application of heat over the whole surface uh, for exactly the same period of time. But certainly, the dry iron is working very well as well. Now, in this case, on the third a uh, piece of paper we've processed. Uh, there is no overt uh, color mode present, so uh, it will be interesting to see what comes up in the fluorescent uh, mode. One frustration common to practitioners who examine all kinds of paper is thermal paper. Uh, we know that when we put it in organic solvents, we end up with this kind of discoloration it usually turns immediately black. Uh, this will vary from manufacturer to ma manufacturer because there are different uh, uh, sources for thermal paper, but in general, uh, one can expect to see this kind of result. And if it doesn't happen in the solution, it uh, will certainly happen when heat is applied. So in this particular case, we can see that there is uh, discoloration uh, indicating fingerprint development on this surface, but it's pretty much obscured by the black. If we turn it over and look at the reverse side, I've marked an area here of interest. Uh, and the, the reason I've marked that is in uh, white light, we see uh, a, a virtual total absence of color mode or color uh, development but uh, we will shortly see what uh, happens in that same area in the fluorescence examination. The last and most significant part of the detection process for finding out what we've developed is to use some sort of light source, and the, the choices are quite broad, uh, in order to see what we found in the fluorescent mode. Uh, I should say that at this point, we're using indane dione, 
we have the choice of using uh, a laser uh, with an output of 532 nanometer green light. We can use a filtered lamp or we can use an LED source such as I'm using here. Uh, Indane Dione is very accepting of all of these uh, excitation sources and uh, you will see uh, the results are quite good. So we turn the light on and we turn the room lights off and uh, without goggles all we see is green light. So I'm going to put my goggles on and immediately we can see a strong yellow fluorescence uh, indicative of fingerprint development on our exhibits here. And in fact, with the thermal paper, which had previously been completely black with just a faint uh, reddish purple discoloration indicating there was some development there, we can now see clearly that there is strong uh, fluorescent development uh, in that area. The final step in the process is, of course, to record whatever we've found. And in order to do that, we have to place uh, a filter similar to the ones in our goggles on the lens of the camera. We turn the light, forensic light on, and we turn the room lights off. And the filter in place, we can now see the fingerprint fluorescence. And it's a conventional photograph to simply take that image and we can now move on to the next stage of sequential processing, oil red oak.